infection. So in polyclinics, is it the nurses only who see them or or the doctors there as well? Do you, do you know? Yeah, yeah. So initially, when they first go, um, the first two weeks, two to three weeks, um, mm. uh, all almost all babies have jaundice, physiological jaundice. So I think that will be the first time they go to the poly. Usually, it's just the nurses. They do the jaundice check and go back. Okay. Uh, they don't really need to see the doctor unless the jaundice level is high. Then they will be directed to see a doctor to see what else needs to be done. Doing it to be referred back for phototherapy, the blue light mm-hmm. therapy. Um, then subsequently, I think for the vaccine checks, uh, usually, uh, they, they do some of the visits is, uh, just jab and go. Mm. And uh, some of the visits, uh, after the jabs, they have to wait for the doctor consult. Okay. Understand. Also, doctor consult is only when necessary. Okay. Yeah. At certain time points in the, oh, and certain uh, time along the way. Yes. Correct. Okay. Um, uh, do you know, like, um, have you, have you had place um kind of practice in 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 the polyclinic before as well? Because this is something I'm curious about from after hearing from the moms that we interviewed, right? Like how much on breastfeeding is actually addressed, you know, during their visits to the polyclinic? Oh, actually, um, yeah. In my own experience, I think I've uh I've I've also tried out uh, being there as a parent myself. Okay. And uh, um, actually, unless you ask. For it, I think uh, they won't necessarily address uh, about breastfeeding. Mm. I think I think in general they just ask how's the baby uh, being fed, and mm. you know the baby surviving well. Uh, usually, I think uh, people don't uh, waste time and dwell into the details because the baby is growing growing well, gaining weight well. So mm. Uh, mm. I don't think there's really a need to uh, mm. because the baby has been like probably been fed the same way for a few months already. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the the priority is to just check the vital kind of. Um, different things, right? The growth, the, to make growth sure. and the development. Mm. Yeah, the, the priority at, at the poly is the growth and the development. Okay, okay. Because they need to fill up the health booklet. If you open the health booklet, then there are those growth parameters and also the development yeah. Yeah. milestones and also the growth chart at the back. So okay. those will be already quite a lot of things to fill up. I see. Understand. Understand. Um, so uh, what is your your view on breastfeeding? Um, yeah, I think it is definitely the way to go because uh, evidence has uh, shown that uh, there are a lot of benefits, uh, not just the emotional bonding, uh, but also in terms of, uh, you know, uh, um, health health measures that um, long-term benefit in terms of reducing allergies uh, and also some emerging evidence uh, that the children could be brighter. So uh, a lot of benefits. Um, immunologically, I think um, the... Uh, breast milk also contains a lot of uh, bioactive uh, compounds, including antibodies, um, lactoferrin, which binds to iron and uh, uh, makes it very difficult for some bacteria to survive, mm. uh, you know, and mm. enzymes. So there are a lot of um, uh, all these com- uh, bioactive components to it that uh, help boost the baby's immune system as well. Mm. So uh, certainly, uh, definitely we it should be the first line of uh, feeding. Mm, mm. In your opinion, right, um, like under what circumstances would it be appropriate to uh, advise a mom to stop breastfeeding? There are very, very few uh, indications or contra- so-called contraindications to breastfeeding. Uh, they can be divided into maternal factors and also baby factors. So maternal factors would be things like, for example, uh, the mother is under going chemotherapy mm. so mm. in our unit we see a lot of high risk cases um, and the very reason why they, they are referred over to us in the first place is because the mothers need to see the adult specialist it could okay. be cancer specialist or heart specialist or kidney specialist um, and we are like a one-stop center so we have all the doctors in the same roof, under the same roof so okay. um, so it's not unusual for us to have mothers who are uh, battling cancer active cancer Mm-hmm. and yet they're pregnant and they deliver mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. a lot of them are on chemo so mm-hmm. once uh, they're on some of these chemos a lot of the times uh, the chemo will go into the milk and mm-hmm. chemo mm-hmm. as you know is very poisonous uh, it's considered poisonous to the body so uh, this will be a, a very valid reason uh, mm-hmm. to advise not to do uh, breastfeeding mm-hmm. for that case and mm-hmm. um yeah, so I, I have uh, several cases already and uh, if they're preterm and, you know, 
they will benefit from human milk. Definitely mm. be candidates for the donor milk. I see. Um, and for the term ones, then um, actually sometimes out of compassion, we uh, we offer the donor milk, but actually the baby doesn't really need to. Okay. Then we can actually give formula as well. I see. I see. Understand. For baby indications, very rare. Um, there's something called inborn error of metabolism. That means uh, somewhere uh, in the chemical pathway in the body, which is so complex and, you know, there's so many pathways, uh, some of the pathways, uh, they are born with abnormal pathways mm. and uh, something wrong with the enzymes. So they cannot mm. digest some components of uh, human milk. Okay. Uh, one example is like galactosemia. So they cannot handle the milk sugar. Mm. So uh, in those situations, they need special um, artificial uh, specialized formula. They cannot okay. take normal milk. Okay, not even oh. regular formula milk, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. Um, so, what are your views on the current protocols uh, in Singapore to encourage breastfeeding? I don't think there is a national protocol. Oh, okay. So, it varies, right? Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no national protocol. Okay, okay. So, what are your views on, like... Uh, like, do you think it's a good idea to not have a national protocol? Not a good idea? Uh, what can uh, be done to improve, if anything, you know, yeah. I, I don't think we need to protocolize everything. Mm, mm. Yeah, so perhaps, uh, uh, I, haven't, I don't have uh, any data or any survey on uh, the prevalence of breastfeeding uh, across different units and hospitals mm, in Singapore. Mm. And also mm. in the private setting, most of the time they are more service based. They don't uh, do academic stuff, like try to record uh, rates of breastfeeding and publish them in journals and so on. Yeah. So so it's very almost impossible to know the true uh, mm. uh, incidence or prevalence unless somebody could does uh, you know an academic survey and so on. Mm, mm, so mm. Um, mm. but um, my sensing is, uh, I think the the. Nowadays, uh, people are veering more towards breastfeeding compared to, say, maybe decades ago. Mm. Mm, mm. Okay. So why, why do you think that's the case? I, th- I think it is a uh, multitude of factors. Um, I think the tertiary hospitals, at least uh, KK, NUH, and SGH, uh, as far as I know, are uh, very, very pro-breastfeeding. And uh, a lot of the um, patients, uh, the, I think the bulk of patients, uh, maybe half of them will deliver in the government hospitals and, uh, perhaps by word of mouth, uh, and also sharing sessions, uh, either through their own friends or through a lot of mothers. Uh, they have a lot of uh, mothers interest groups, for example, mm. here on Telegram or, uh, some mm. other social media. Uh, I think they will share. Mm. I think mm. they will share, and perhaps they will share the benefits. So I suspect this is one way, um, a little bit like peer pressure. Mm. The other, the other, uh, more systematic way why this, uh, incline is going this way is because, um, the only way, most of the time like in Singapore, the only way the, um, mo- most of the specialists in Singapore mm. are trained within our own system. Yeah. yeah, so they, they go, whether it's the pediatrician or obstetrician, they usually go through these three hospitals. Yeah. Um, and uh, if the culture is ingrained in them later on, as they, even if they continue in public practice or they move on to set up their own private practice, mm. probably the culture is already ingrained. Mm. And then actually, that's what they will share with their patients. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good point. Um, what do you think of the information? on breastfeeding that is currently uh, being given to, to women here in Singapore? Uh, should it promote and frame breastfeeding differently? Or if so, uh, why? What, what do you mean promote differently? Mm-hmm. Differently from what? So, you know, okay, I, I guess the reason why I ask this question is because some moms, um, uh, when we interview, have shared that they feel a social pressure um, to breastfeed and when it does not go as planned or when they, they just cannot breastfeed or they decide not to persist with it uh, there's this sense of of shame of guilt of you know so you did mention a little bit that there's, there's something like a peer pressure that that has been felt among the moms so do you think that um, breastfeeding 
uh, has been the, the way